These days, you can't be too secure on the internet. You might worry about your criminals, your internet service provider, or even your government. With a VPN or a virtual private network, you can stop these unwanted intruders. This is especially important when protecting your home network. To help you through this issue, we want to show you how to set up a VPN on your router or router, depending on where you are in the world. We will go through why you want to set up a VPN, how to set up a VPN, picking a VPN that supports routers, accessing the router's admin page, and how to flash your router. So why would you want to set up a VPN on your router? First, few VPNs allow you to put unlimited devices on your list. Even if they could, those of us who own too much tech might go insane after setting up yet another computer. In addition, not all devices support VPNs. Some tablets and smart home devices can't accept VPNs. For example, a Samsung smart fridge might keep your food cold, but isn't ideal for internet security. These two problems relate to why VPNs exist in the first place, protecting your data. For hackers and information gatherers, these devices represent vulnerabilities. Hackers, internet service providers, and government entities can take advantage of these vulnerabilities and use them against you. Having a router-based VPN encrypts all data, including those coming from devices that normally cannot benefit from the protection. So now that we know why you might want to set up a VPN on your router, how do you go about setting everything up? Well, first, you need all of the right stuff. This includes a good router, a computer connected via Ethernet cord, a good VPN, and a working internet browser. First, looking at the router, you have one of two options. Option one, a router that already has VPN support. These will need to be third-party routers, not the one your internet service provider gives you. After all, they aren't going to support anything that makes it harder for them to gather data. Routers from Asus, like the RTAX86S, can help. You can also look for Linksys or Netgear routers. You have to do a bit of setup with these, but we will show you how. You might also look for pre-flashed routers, which have a third-party operating system that supports VPNs already installed. Sites like flashrouters.com can help you with that. Now, assuming that you don't have the budget for a new router, your old router might work. This brings us to option number two, flashing your router. Flashing is just a fancy way of saying replace the operating system. Think of it like installing Linux on an old Windows PC to give it new life. Only your router doesn't have a CD slot. To start, you'll need to download third-party firmware from one of these sites, dd-wrt.com, openwrt, or Advanced Tomato. Search for your router on any of these sites and save the file. You'll want to be sure the firmware is fully tested, often indicated by some sort of label on your site. If not, you risk turning your router into a rather expensive paperweight. Once you have your router squared away, you need a VPN that actively supports router-based connections. If you don't have a good VPN yet, we have two suggestions, NordVPN and Surfshark. NordVPN is ideal if you're looking for lightning fast connections above all else. However, Nord is also one of the most secure VPN platforms out there. Surfshark is just as secure and a lot cheaper. You'll sacrifice a bit of speed for using it, but it's still an awesome VPN. If you want discounts for either VPN, check out the links in our description. If you already had to buy a new VPN router, we hope this helps you save a bit of money. The wired connection we mentioned earlier is mainly necessary if you are flashing your router. After all, when the router changes identities, it's not going to remember how to be wireless. The browser is, well, a browser. Just pick your favorite one. Now that you have all your equipment lined up, you can start taking steps to access the router. For simplicity's sake to start, we will assume that you've already got a router that supports VPNs. To access that router, you'll want to look for a sticker either on the side or the bottom of the router. If the sticker is gone for some reason, go to your connection details on any computer. The connection mentions a default gateway. This is your router IP address. The sticker should hold the URL or IP address of your router and the admin password. Take the URL or IP, type it into your favorite browser, and smack that enter key. Gently. Provided most of your keys are still on the board, you should see a request for a username and password. 
Enter what you found on the side of your router and you'll have access to the admin screen. Now with some Asus, Linksys or Netgear routers, you should see a menu under Advanced Settings named VPN. You'll want to click on this menu and look for some options to add connection details. If you purchased a pre-flashed router, these details likely are already there. However, you'll want to click the Add Connection button. Typically, you'll have a few options, PPTP, L2TP and OpenVPN. Stick to the last two, as PPTP is an old-fashioned protocol that went out of style like parachute pants. Also, it's not very secure. Stick to OpenVPN or L2TP, both have proven security. Once you have that, log in and access your VPN provider. From their dashboard, you should see an option for router connections. What you want to find is an OVPN file, which downloads the manual configuration for OpenVPN. Download this file. You'll also find that the router page is asking for your username and password. This isn't the standard password you get, it's a randomly generated set of numbers and letters seen on the VPN dashboard. Copy them and paste them into the router page, click the OK button and check your results. If you got it right, you should see some sort of check mark or confirmation message on the connection status. Congratulations, you now have a VPN router. Now, what if you need to flash your router? To start, you'll want to follow the same steps we provided on accessing your router. Only instead, you're going to be looking for your router's firmware update page. Through this page, you can install third-party firmware from one of the three sites that we mentioned earlier. The firmware updating option typically has a browse button that you can click where you can select your file. After you process this file by clicking an update button on the same screen, give your router a few minutes to update. After the update is done, your router should look like it has a new interface. From there, you can follow the steps we've already gone through to get your router set up. Now, remember to have a wired connection at this point. Again, wireless connections while switching your firmware means you can lose access in the middle of an update. I know we've said this a few times now, but better that than to give you a reason to put a router-sized hole in your window. Now you have all of your at-home devices secure. Just don't forget to keep your VPN clients on any mobile devices such as smartphones, laptops, and some tablets. With these steps, you can save yourself the hassle of covering all of your home devices with device limits. So just as a quick reminder, here's what you now know. You know why router-based VPNs are useful. How to set up your router VPN. How to find a good VPN for your router. Logging into your router and getting an OVPN file. And finally, flashing your router when it doesn't currently support VPNs. Now, we'd love to hear from you. Did this video help you? Do we need to make more videos about topics like these? Keep us posted down in those comments. Otherwise, like and subscribe to our channel for more internet security and tech tips. Thank you so very much for watching. I'll see you next time.